Good to have you here today in the house of the Lord. I hope you've had a wonderful spring break. My family were able to go to spring break. My uh, daughter went to uh, one side of Florida with her friend, and we went to the other side of Florida down to Cape Canaveral. And, uh, we're only gone from Wednesday to Saturday, but I feel like we've been gone for three weeks. Um, that may have been Benjamin's hand, but I don't know. <laughs> we went on the beach, and uh, the birds are probably um, having to go see counselors now because uh, Every time those seagulls would land, Ben thought he could catch one. He kept saying, I want to pet one. But they didn't want to be petted. So uh, people were laughing at him. He was making them fly. And we were trying to run him down. He, he, he was pretty fast. But we had a good time. We had a good time at uh, Cape Cadaveral and Kennedy Space Center. If you haven't gone there, you need to go. It's an amazing place to go to visit. Um, it's really cool. Um, but it's good to be home. Amen. It's good to go on vacation, but it's good to be home. And so we are glad to be here. Good to be here with you in the house of the Lord. Today is a little different because we're going to get communion on the first Sunday of the month. And because Easter was this Sunday, the first Sunday, we're going to get communion today. And you'll notice communion is there in front of you. And so I hope um, when the time comes, the communion will be around you. You can reach down with your family or behind you and you can get a uh, communion that you need. Um, we're still doing it with the cups that are self-serving. Um, there's a little clear tab to pull to get to the bread, and then there's a little purple tab to get to the juice at the appropriate time. And I will lead you in that at the end of the uh, service when we get the real bread. Um, confirmation starts back this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Excited about that. Um, our Bible study on Daniel starts back this evening as well at 6. Um, Wednesdays will start back normally with our activities for children, youth, and adults will be having our Bible study on uh, Master Katie's book that we've been going through, uh, starting back from that as well. Um, so I hope you'll come and be a part of all the things that are going on. I'm looking forward to this month of April and moving into May and, of course, the summer. Please be looking for an email today with information on VBS. Uh, Holly Ann has got an email set up, and I'll be sending that out today. So if you have any questions, you can let Holly Ann know, and uh, she'll answer any of those questions. We would love for you to help and be a part um, of BBS this year. I'm excited about uh, the things we're having. All the help that we can get. That's right. <laughs> All the help that we can get. We look forward to having it, but we didn't get to have it last year. Not the way that we wanted it to be. All right. With all that being said, if you're visiting with us today, we're thankful that you're here with us today. If you're watching this um, by recording, we're thankful that you're watching with us as well. I know we have a lot of people who are coming back from um, spring break this week, but it is good for you to be here. It's thankful to be together. Let's stand and invite God to be here. We know he already is, but we want to make that invitation together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne today, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to worship you today. Lord, we pray that all we do and all we say in these moments together we glory and honor to your name. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you for your love for us. In your very precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Ask anybody to stand and start out. Praise the Lord in song. I've been singing 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord of my soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
series today, and the idea of it is going to be how God is our refuge, our shelter, and there are seasons in our lives where we shelter in place. You heard that before? And we are in that season, and Lord willing, we'll be coming out of it soon. But shelter is defined as protection or shield from something harmful. Refuge is defined as shelter protection from danger. Protection or shield for something harmful. I want you to understand, every time we as a church or as an individual get on our knees to pray, it is a time of refuge. It is a time of shelter. We need to understand that. Jesus went to the garden, did he not? He went to the garden for a brief moment. Sometimes I think we think sheltering means we're going to be in there for a year and a half, right? Shelter can be just a moment. A moment where we understand who God is and we understand we are not alone and we understand he is with us. Now in that moment of shelter, we may not get the answer we want, but we hear God speak to us. Jesus asked that the cup would be passed from him, that he would not have to take the cross. Right? That's what he said. Let this cup pass from me, but not my will. Your will be done. Of course, the cup was not passed from him, and he took the cross, praise the Lord. So we're going to be looking at that idea today of shelter, and then we're going to move into stories that we find in the Bible, where God took people and put them in a moment of shelter. And what we find in those stories, which I find to be very amazing, is that on the other side of that shelter 
God does something awesome. I believe with all my heart, this time of sheltering place we've been in. I know people say, well, it was the government that made us do it. It was this that made us do it. Listen, I think it was God that made us do it. I think God has got something in store for his church. And we are coming out on the other side of this, and we're not going back to business as usual. We're not going back to doing things the way we've always done them. I think that's what God wants his church to understand and wake up to. It's a new world, and the church is never going to need more than it is needed now. So what is God going to use the Leesburg United Methodist Church to do in this new world we find ourselves in? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, we are going to a moment of shelter. We're sheltering, sheltering together. We're finding our refuge together. It may be but for three minutes or less. But I want you to feel God put his arms around you. I don't know what's going on in your life, but God does. There may be some big things going on that you're dealing with. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe it's relational. Maybe it's mental. I don't know. But God does. In this moment, when we go to the Lord in prayer, I want you to feel Him put His arms around you and speak to your heart. I want you to block out everybody else. I don't want you to worry about who's praying, who's not praying, who has their eyes open, who doesn't. I don't even want you to worry about what the pastor's saying when he leads us in prayer. I want you to hear God speak to you this morning. Here with family, and together we find our refuge in Him. Amen? Amen. There are many that we want to be lifting up, many we want to be praying for. I hope you got the emails this week. We had a lot of people who lost loved ones this week. Let's lift our hearts to them. Let's remember people in Louisiana who lost everything. I mean, it was crazy, some of the devastation that took place in that little town in Louisiana. And there's still storms going on below us in Florida. Let's remember them as they go through their storm. Let's have a moment of silence and gather our thoughts together. And I will lead us in a moment of prayer. But remember, this is your time. Let's refuge together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before your throne. And as I think of David, throughout the Psalms, we find moments where David goes to you and he prays. A lot of the songs that he would sing, he would sing in that moment of refuge, where he would get away, and the weight of the world was on his shoulders, and he would speak to you. Today, God, we come before your throne, and each one of us carries our own burdens, those things that cause us to stumble. Those things that rob our peace, rob our joy. Lord, you know exactly what they're up, they are, but you hide them from you. Maybe today, God, we're dealing with something relational with a, with a loved one. Maybe today we're dealing with sin. Maybe it's a sin that continues to fight against us. Maybe today, God, we're dealing with doubt. We're dealing with fear, uncertainty. Lord, you are our refuge over and over again in your word. We hear that, we see that played out in your people's lives. We've seen it played out in our own life, if we're honest. Today, God, we give you whatever it is, that whatever that thing is that we serve. Maybe our burden is for somebody else. We know we have a lot of people on our prayer list that are going through difficult moments today. We have families who lost loved ones unexpectedly this last week. Some of them are in other countries, and they can't even get there to be with their family in this time of life. Lord, we ask that you put your arms around these families so that they feel your presence. God, we are thankful that we don't walk in this world alone if you're there with us. What we also understand, Lord, is that we can't stay in that time of refuge. Jesus didn't stay in the garden. He got up and he went out to do what you called him to do. Lord, I don't know when this pandemic is truly going to be over, but I know on the other side of that, you've got something special and amazing for this church to be a part of. I anticipate it. I can't wait to see what it is. 
Help us to be ready for that. Give us whatever we need to accomplish the task you have set before us. Lord, we open our eyes clearly, our ears to hear clearly, and our minds to comprehend what you're saying to us. Lord, not our will, but your will be done in us as we move forward. We love you today, and we'll give you our sins. Again, be with us, Lord, in this service. Let us feel your presence very real. Help us to leave this place a little different than we came in. This is the prayer we pray in your son's precious name. All God's people said, Amen. Again, we're going to sing. I just want to advance the stage and just call the final stage to know that the fact that we're going to have a commercial home in the ministry. Um, I'll tell you that this is my favorite hymn in the book. It's uh, Our Firm of Foundation from the Five Twenty Nine. And uh, but I really want you to listen to the, the words to this as we sing it today because I think it just fits perfectly what Lee is talking about. You know, we, we have that foundation and, and that's what enables us to to go forward um, and go through the trials and tribulations that we go through. And, uh, we have that foundation in him. So let's stand. We're going to sing all five verses of this. <laughs>
We've seen it before, but it's the new Snyder Cut. It's got four hours of the movie, so we watched it over a period of like three days because I can't sit for four hours and watch one movie. Um, so we were watching it. Dan loves superheroes, right? So we, there wasn't really anything super scary. So we thought, Dan don't like it. He did. He loved, he loved seeing it. His favorite, one of his favorite characters is Cyborg. He loves Cyborg. And Cyborg is this guy that's, anyway, if you don't know, he's, he's half robot, half guy. He's, he's pretty cool. Well, there was one scene where Cyborg starts shaking. And, and I would never have thought in many years this was scary. But he started crying in the middle of this movie. So me and Christopher felt like the best parents ever. First of all, right? But, but he starts crying. He's, he got scared of Cyborg's pain. And he goes to Christopher, and Christopher can see him. And then he looks at me, and then I grab him. And, and he just put his head in, in my shoulders, and I'm just holding him. And, and, and as he's crying, and he finally kind of stopped laughing. He starts asking me all these questions about what he's doing. And of course, I'm saying, you know, this isn't real, right? It's not real. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's life. So we went in, and once we were done talking about everything, he was okay. But he didn't want to get out of all. He stayed in my arms until he was okay. He got to fight him because we needed to do it. Then he got down and he lived the movie. <laughs> and, and he said, I'll watch that later when I'm older. I said, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> but for that moment, his mom and his dad were places in children's movies, right? Have you ever been there and where you're scared and you want somebody to put their arms around you? Maybe you heard bad news from your doctor, your spouse, your loved ones there, and you, you love them in that moment. But they can't take away what's going on. But they, they, there's some kind of shelter, some kind of comfort. You lose a loved one, you're at a funeral. You've been there, haven't you? You know how that feels. And you know how it feels to have somebody put their arms around you. Um, you know, when my brother died, one of my good friends, Carter, was there when, when Ryan died. And Carter didn't know what to do, what to say. And all he did was put his arms around me and hug me. And that's exactly what I needed in that moment was my friend, to my brother, to put his arms around me and say, I'm sorry. And God put him there for that purpose. I know. That refuge, that's something we as human beings desperately need. We need that shelter. We need that time um, where we kind of get away. We have been in a shelter in place for a year and a half. I know some of you, if you're like me, you're like, I'm ready for this shelter to be over, right? I'm ready to kind of get back into the world of the easy. I'm ready for the ropes to go down. I'm ready for the mask to go away. I don't know when all that's going to happen. Hopefully sooner than later, right? Um, but we need to look at these moments of refuge as a good place. But we also need to understand can stay in those moments, right? So, today we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy 33, verses 26 through 29. If you've got your Bibles, let's turn there with me. As you're turning there, I want to kind of give you some insight on what we're looking at. The beginning of chapter 33 is Moses' blessings. He's blessing every single tribe. And this is going out to all tribes, but each tribe he mentions with the exception of one, and that's the, the tribe that's kind of in the bad ones. Okay? So he doesn't really list them. He, he leaves them out. But what I love about this is Moses, this is his final words. They're going into the promised land. Moses is not. Moses is staying behind. He's going to go up on top of the mountain, and he's going to be able to see the promised land. But he's going to die at the top of the not be able to make it across. And that goes back to what happened in the Old Testament of in further in, in the story of Moses, where he kind of gets mad with God and, and some things take place. But to leave the, the leader, to leave your last words, all the things that you can say, I would challenge you to read chapter 33 because it's filled with some amazing things. But our focus point is, is again going to be with verse 26 through 27. And this is what he's talking to with Asher. Now, I want you to hear these words this morning. This is his last words, his blessings. And again, everybody, all the tribes that are getting this are seeing what he's saying to each tribe. And I think it's important to understand. 
because this is kind of the last will and testament, the last thing he could say to all that would read it. Um, now he's got specific things for each tribe, but again, this is going out to all of them. So let's look at it. Verse 26. There is none like the God of Jeshurun or Israel. That word is Israel. Who rise the heavens to your aid, the clouds of his majesty. The God of old is your dwelling place, refuge, or shelter. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He drives out the enemy before you. He commands to destroy. So Israel dwells securely. Jacob lives untroubled in the land of grain and new wine. Even his skies drip with dew. How happy are you, Israel? Who is like you, a people saved by the Lord? He is the shield that protects you, the sword your boat you boast in. Your enemies will cringe before you, and you will tread on their back. And the powerful words of Moses to the Israelite people. Enemies, you will tread on their back. I don't know what you're going through, but a refuge, a shelter is a place where we remember who God is. Where we remember we're not alone. Where we remember he is with us in those uncertain, troubled moments. I mean, you heard me talk about, you've heard me share before when I was young, and before my family moved from Ohio, I'm down to Wake Cross. My dad got his first full-time pastor in Waycross, Georgia. So he moved to Winchester, Ohio. And, and I was three years old, almost four, when we moved down to Waycross, Georgia. But before we moved, uh, about the same time frame, um, a tornado came through Ohio. And it came through our neighborhood. And it actually picked our car up and put it in the garage for us. That was nice of them. But... <laughs> But I remember being young and I was sitting there and I heard the windows start to shake. It's one of my first vivid memories I can remember. And I remember my mom ran in and grabbed me. She took me into the bathroom where there were no windows with everybody else in the family. And the hurricane came through. Now it totally destroyed um, homes on the um, left side of the room. But on the right side, it, we just had a ton of wind damage. And I said, I picked up the car and destroyed the garage. But we were okay. But that bathroom was our time of refuge, right? It was our place where we were safe. We made it through the storm. I, I looked this morning on the Weather Channel, and I read a, a, an account of a woman in Louisiana, in that small little town. And she said that her and her husband and her set up a freight train, and they ran to the bathroom, and they ripped the roof, the second story of their house, off. It's gone. Their cars were utterly destroyed. Everything outside was, was demolished. And she said, you know, we're okay. We, we got each other. We're alive. We made it through. They made it through that storm. They lost so much, but they were okay. Because in their time of storm, they had the refuge to hold on to, right? That safety. Jesus, we've already talked about, goes to the garden. He does not want to go to the cross. Can you imagine Mary? all the pain of the cross in a physical sense, then also bearing all the sin of the world. The ugliness, the evil that's found in that sin is placed on Jesus. And so, as one would think, he says, let this come pass for me. But I'll do what you want me to do, Father. Really, a time of refuge for him before the storm. He did not get the answer he wanted, but he made it through. He took the cross and bore its shame. And now Jesus is walking around, right? We're after Easter, but we're still in Easter season. Jesus has not ascended to the heaven yet. He is showing himself to the disciples. Even the disciples, right? Jesus has been crucified. We talked about the, the feeling of the body being gone, so they stole his body. But they still are locked up in the upper room. That is a place of refuge for them. They are being protected until God can come to them. In this new sermon series, we're going to look at stories like that. Look at stories like Noah, the refuge of a boat, right? And God's got some amazing things after. He does. 
You've got a lot of things you're going to be looking at. But I want us to start with this idea of why the refuge is so important. Listen, I can tell you this kind of sheltering in place that we've been in, God has used it to put families together. Maybe the daddy had to work all the time, and for the first time in a long time, daddy stayed home. And got to reconnect with kids. Maybe mama got to stay home. Reconnect with kids. I know for Christmas, she loved me. Because she got to be home with Ben. She didn't have to go to America's every single day. Back in the day. Michael would love to stay in shelter and place because he loved being home instead of going to school. There have been some things, important things that have happened in this time of shelter. Has it been tough? Yes. Do we like it? No. But God is using it to do something great. I hope that we are not the same people when we come out, out of it that we were when we went in. I hope God has done something to move in us to make us different. I believe one of the biggest things that we're going to be praying for is bringing people back. Because there's a lot of people who've gotten used to watching church on TV. And watching church on TV is okay. But that's not the plan that God had. God wants us to gather together, to be together. How great was last Sunday Easter? Being outside, seeing people we have not seen in a long time. There were people who attended who would not attend inside, but they came to that. That was special. It's important. Confirmation is going on. And I am thankful for the ability to have confirmation online because there are kids who would not be a part of confirmation if they were not able to do it because their parents have health issues. I hope we can get to a place where we don't need to do those things anymore. But until we do, we need to understand what sheltering is all about. It's about a time to remember who God is. It's about a time to strengthen our resolve and understand who we are. It's about a time to realize what God is wanting from us. Moses is leaving his last words, his blessing to the people, and he is trying to encourage them. They're going into an unknown land. They're going into a place where there are big enemies, right? The spies go into the promised land, and they see these guys that look like giants. Moses is reminding them, it's okay. God's given you the promised land. You're going to be okay. And, and to a point, we can even think of the wilderness as a time of sheltering and preparing God's people to move into the promised land, right? The wilderness seemed bad, it seemed ugly, and it was. But God did a lot in them and through them. He kind of sh uh, did some shifting, right? Sifting the wheat through. To prepare them to go into the promised land. But what I also want us to understand, and what we see in all these different stories, is God does not want us to dwell in that place of shelter. Jesus didn't stay in the garden, did he? Now, that woman on, on, on the Weather Channel, she didn't say, from now on, we're living in the bathroom. We're never living in the bathroom. It's the safest place in the house. She didn't say that, did she? My family didn't live in the bathroom from that point on. No, because we have to come up out of that place. We do not dwell in that shelter. We don't stay in the cave. We come up out of it. Because God has something amazing set for us. For Jesus, it was bearing the sin of the world and the resurrection in the empty tomb. For Noah, it was something. For the, for the um, disciples who come up out of the upper room, they do some amazing things and share the good news. We're here today because they came out of that time of shelter. In that moment of prayer, which is so sweet, we can't stay in that for so long. There are times when we fast, and fasting is really a state of refuge. We fast, and every time we get hungry, we remember, and we go to God. So it's this continuation of prayer and fasting. But even that, we come out of it. I remember an older man who was a saint there in Waycross, Mr. Roy. 
He fasted for a week with nothing but water. And they made him come up out of it because the doctor said he had to for different health issues. So he loved, he said it was the sweetest time. But he couldn't stay there. He came up out of it. Listen, I don't know when the shelter in place is going to be over for this pandemic. But I gotta tell you, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I hope. And I hope we get to a place where we can come up out of it. And where God is going to use us to do some amazing things. Maybe it's in your school, you teacher. Students, maybe it's in your school using you to do something you've never done before. Maybe it's in your business, your place of work, wherever you work. Maybe it's a marine base. I don't know. But I believe God wants to do something amazing in you and through you. In church, I think God has something amazing for the Greensboro United Methodist Church. I don't know what it is, but I think it's going to be great. I'm getting calls from people I've never gotten calls to be a part of things I've never been a part of that I've been in. By essence, if your pastor's a part of it, guess what? You're a part of it too. I'm excited about what I see God doing. But I want us not to go back to where we were. I want us to move forward where God has us and where he wants us to be. Amen? As we move now to a time of communion, I want us to remember what Jesus did for us. I want us to remember what Jesus did before he went to the cross. Going to the garden. Finding that place of shelter to talk to God. And being obedient to follow what God was leading him to the cross of Calvary. I want us to remember the disciples huddled in that upper room. A place of refuge and safety. They didn't stay there. They went out. We'll talk about that in the coming Sundays. I want us to remember what Jesus did for you. I want us to remember he is with us today. When you take communion today, I don't know what you're going through in your house, at your home, in your place of work, in your business. I don't know. But I want you to know he is a refuge for you. Just like Benjamin came to me and wanted me to hold him. Came to his mama and wanted her to hold him. He's there waiting to hold you. And speak to your heart. Go through whatever. He's there. Today, this is our reminder of what you will go to, the lengths you will go to to be there for you, right? Beating death once and for all. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne, we are so thankful for who you are. We're so thankful for what you've done for us. We're so thankful that you are our refuge, our shelter, in our time of need. Lord, today, as we stand on the foundation that we sing about in our own hymn, let us remember that you're always there with open arms when we need you. Maybe in this life we live, God, we have but three minutes to say a prayer. Let us go into that refuge for three minutes to feel your arms around us and then step back into what you call us to. Whatever trouble we find ourselves in, whatever struggle we're going through, you are there. You are our refuge. Help us to connect with you, Father. Feel your arms around us. But then be reminded that we'll stay there. We move out to where you would have us go. Today, Lord, we take communion. Part of what we say is that we are taking in the body and the blood of Christ in a figurative way, and then we leave this place filled with your presence. We don't stay here. We leave. We go into the world. Your hands, your feet, your voice, speaking love and truth the world needs to hear. Be with us, we pray, Father, in your precious name. If you will, turn to your handles to page 12.
done with the liturgy, uh, we will end with a prayer. And that, that time we will stand, and he will hand you the communion cup so we can go forward in communion, okay? All right. Page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him to earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. The great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, sin, and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it and eat. This is my body which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, and ye who is Christ offered for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Till Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly land. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Did you hear that? We find moments to shelter in place. And then we have to come about it. But the thing about heaven, the thing about eternity, the thing about what is all said and done, is we never will leave the refuge of God ever, ever, ever again. Amen? Never again. That's what eternity is about. Is being in the arms of God. What a sweet place to be. Today, we fill ourselves here figuratively once more to go out into the world and be ready. Spring break was great. It was a time of refuge. But we had to come home with it, right? God's got something in store for us. Something great. I can't wait to see what it does. Would you stand? And as you stand and close, I'll close, but pray, get your communion cups, and we'll continue with our communion. There's a lot spread around, so I want to make sure everybody gets to it. <coughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we get ready to partake of Holy Communion, I pray that you would fill us with yourself. Be in us, so that as we leave this service of refuge, that's what every Sunday is. It's a time of refuge for the kids, the youth, 
We don't. We come into this place and find safety. We find camaraderie and our brothers and sisters who are living in the same world we're living in. Some dealing with the same things we're dealing with. We allow you to put your arms, you put your arms around us. And then we leave filled with your presence, prepared to do whatever you call us to do. We love you, Father. Be with us now as we partake of these holy elements. In your precious name, amen. The white little film allows you to get the bread. The body of Christ broken for you. The purple bullet that allows you to get to the juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Was everybody able to get communion this morning? Nobody left out? All right, as the praise man comes forward, let's pray one more time. Heavenly Father, as we come now to the closing of our service, I love communion Sundays because the invitation has already been given. We have been invited to the table, and we just partook. We were there at the table with you. Lord, I am thankful for that truth today. Now, Lord, we leave this place filled with your presence, ready to do what you're calling us to do in the week ahead. Lord, I know for many coming off of spring break, the teachers going back, or others going back to work, and still others who've been working this whole time. I don't know what you have for us, Lord. Well, help us to be ready. We love you. Help us to remember you're always there for us to find refuge. We don't stay there. We move out. We love you, Father. Be with us now. Amen. Amen.
Be with us to read this place in your precious name. 